Hey, thanks for pressing play on this episode of the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. A nostalgic look back at my favorite Rangers from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm your host, Tom Browning. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. I'm your host, Tom Browning. I'd like to bring you all back to the 1980s, and in particular, the 1981-82 season, when the Rangers signed an undrafted free agent center iceman by the name of Mark Pavlich, number 16. Mark Pavlich made an incredible impact on the Rangers that particular year, setting New York Ranger rookie scoring record with 33 goals and 76 points. He centered a line with Ron Duguay and Anders Hedberg, both of those players having career years with the Rangers as well. And not only did they have a fine regular season, but they later went on to upset the heavily favored Flyers in the early rounds of the Stanley Cup playoffs. A playoff upset that is still remembered today and one of the greatest upsets in National Hockey League history. But it wasn't only Mark Pavlich's rookie year with the Rangers where he had such a huge impact. How about the year before? As a key member of the 1980 USA Olympic hockey team, the Miracle on Ice team, a bunch of fresh-faced collegiate hockey players that went up against some formidable, seasoned, veteran European hockey clubs, including the Russian hockey team, who they beat to win the gold medal during the 1980 Olympics. Mark Pavlich is not well known for winning the gold medal game. It was Mike Ruzioni who scored that gold, but it was Mark Pavlich that people forget who set up Ruzioni on that goal. As a matter of fact, Mark Pavlich had two assists in that game for a total of two points. And it was right after that game that people looked at the 1980 USA Olympic hockey team as the catalyst for the growth of amateur hockey here in this country. People point to that 1980 Olympic hockey team, even today in the year 2017, as a reason for the explosion of growth in amateur hockey, whether it be peewee hockey, high school hockey, college hockey in this country. And it's the thousands and thousands of, of kids who play amateur hockey today in this country that has led to the influx of American hockey players in the minor leagues, in the NHL, and playing professionally overseas. So Mark Pavlich and his teammates not only made an incredible impact on the way the game was played in the National Hockey League in the 1980s, but the way the game was played here in this country as well. For the style of hockey that kids were taught in this country, and for the interest and for the explosion of amateur hockey in this country. Now, right after the Olympics, there were several USA hockey t- players that went on to have very strong careers in the National Hockey League. But right away, Mark Pavlich was not one of those players. As a matter of fact, once the Olympics were complete, Mark Pavlich did not get any nibbles from an NHL hockey team. He went overseas to play professionally over in Switzerland, where he had a great season with the Swiss professional team. As a matter of fact, over a 60-game period of time, he scored 76 points, averaging over averaging over a point per game. And it was this successful season that former coach Herb Brooks, who went on to become the the Ranger head coach in 1981-82, that wanted to, to speak to Mark Pavlich about joining him, along with Rob McClanahan, Dave Silk, and then the following season, star defenseman from that USA hockey team, Bill Baker, to join the Rangers. But Herb Brooks wanted to bring a different style of hockey to the New York Rangers after he succeeded Hall of Fame coach Freddie Shiro. People forget, or people remember, I should say, that Freddie Shiro was the leader of the Philadelphia Flyers in the mid-70s when he brought them to two Stanley Cup championships. But people forget that he brought some real success to the New York Rangers as well, taking the New York Rangers to the 1979 finals, Stanley Cup finals against the Montreal Canadiens. But during the 1981 1980-81 season, Freddie Shiro had a tough season with the New York Rangers, and Ranger front office decided to make a change. And at the t- at that time, they brought in Herb Brooks to, to become the head coach of the New York Rangers. And Herb Brooks wanted to surround himself with hockey players that could play his style of hockey. And he knew how important Mark Pavlich was to that USA hockey team and what a great season he had over in Switzerland. So he brought over Mark Pavlich, and Mark Pavlich had an incredible impact on the New York Rangers that particular year. Mark Pavlich is not a very big hockey player, about 5'8", 5'9", about 195 pounds, but he was tremendously skilled. He was a goal scorer. He could set up goals. He could feed the puck, and he was as tough as nails. He was one of the most physically imposing players for a guy his size, not only in college hockey, but also in the National Hockey League. People would think that a player that size would be a perimeter player. Uh Uh-uh. Mark Pavlich was tough down low. He, he went to the dirty areas of the ice. He was tough defensively. He was tough offensively. And he never backed down against players twice his size. And that really led to his success. As a matter of fact, he has often said that he realized that in order to be successful, 
in the National Hockey League, he had to play a mean game. And he did he did bring a little bit of nasty to the ice each and every each and every night. And he brought a tremendous amount of leadership and confidence to the New York Rangers during that 1981-82 season. Rangers were a pretty skilled team that year. They had skilled players like Mike Rogers, the aforementioned Ron Duguay, Anders Hedberg, Eddie Johnstone, who scored 30 goals that year. They had Barry Beck. They had Rejo Rutsalainen, one of the more skilled defensemen you'd ever want to see, one of the more skilled defensemen to ever lace up the skates for the red, white, and blue of the New York Rangers. He was also a European hockey player from Finland. Rangers had a very dynamic, very charismatic team that year one of the more skilled teams in the National Hockey League. And Mark Pavlich helped lead the way. As I mentioned earlier, they went up against the heavily favored Philadelphia Flyers during the early rounds of the playoffs during that 1981-82 playoff season. The Flyers were a big, strong, rugged hockey team. As a matter of fact, the Flyers may have led the NHL in points that season. They had well over 100 points. And if they weren't first, they were maybe second or third. But they had tremendous size on that team. They had players like Tim Kerr, Bill Barber. They had uh, Dave Brown. They had Mel Bridgman, Paul Holmgren, Brian Propp. Ilka Sinasalo, one of the more skilled European hockey players on the Philadelphia Flyers. They had Daryl Sittler at the end of his career, but still an effective, rugged, two-way hockey player. They had, as I mentioned, Dave Brown, one of the more physical, intimidating players in the league. But yet they had a very heavy-footed, yet physical defense. Guys like Frank Bathe, Brad Marsh, Ben Wilson, Jimmy Watson, Rob Hoffmeyer, Bob Daly. Good defensemen, but slow afoot. And... It was during the playoffs that Herb Brooks put together a game plan, capitalizing on the Rangers' skill level and the Rangers' quickness and speed, that they felt they could capitalize on the lack of the lack of maneuverability of that flyer defense. Take advantage of the of the slow speed, the slow footedness of the range of the flyer defenseman. And boy, did it work! I had season tickets that year, and Madison Square Garden was in. Incredibly hyped up at the way the New York Rangers were taking it to the Philadelphia Flyers in the playoffs. Again, no one expected it. The Flyers were heavily favored, and the New York Rangers, they just intimidated the the Flyers defensemen with their speed and skill. And the Rangers scored a lot of goals against the Flyers in that particular playoff round and easily went on and beat the Philadelphia Flyers in one of the biggest upsets in the playoffs in National Hockey League history. As a matter of fact, right before the playoffs started, Bob McCammon, I believe it was Bob McCammon, the coach of the Flyers, had mentioned that, uh, you know, it was like playing the Smurfs, the New York Rangers, their diminutive hockey players with their speed. So they were calling the Smurfs during not only that season, but the following playoff season when they also beat the Philadelphia Flyers in the playoffs. So it was this collection of very skilled, very quick, very fast range of forwards that took it to the Flyers to upset the Flyers during the 1981-82 playoffs. They beat them again the following year. But Mark Pavlich had a lot to do with it. And it was the next season that Mark Pavlich set a goal-scoring record for him, scoring 37 goals his second year with the New York Rangers, following up his rookie year with a very solid campaign. Now also, before we get to his third season, he actually scored five goals in a single game during his second year back in 1982-83. Five goals at home against the Hartford Whalers. No Ranger has ever done that. Uh, now Don Murdoch scored five, ro- uh, five goals on the road during his career. Now of course, Ranger fans remember what a charismatic, dynamic player Don Murdoch was and the rookie year he had when he played for the New York Rangers. But when you move on to Mark Pavlich's third season with the Rangers, this was his finest offensive production uh, season yet. It was his third full season. He was very healthy. He wound up leading the team in points, and he also had a career high in penalty minutes. I believe it was 92 or 94, 96 minutes. And as I mentioned before, he's a hard-nosed, gritty, tough hockey player. And Mark Pavlich was not afraid (laughs) to make the occasional trip to the penalty box, that's for sure. Now, unfortunately, that was the last healthy Mark Pavlich that the New York Rangers saw. In the 1984, 85, and 85, 86 seasons, he was uh, nagged by injuries, which really cut into his offensive production. And it was after the uh, 1985, 86 season that uh, the Rangers decided to make a change in uh, their head coach. Uh, Herb Brooks was released from the New York Rangers, and the Rangers went outside the organization and brought in Ted Sater, who was the longtime assistant coach with the Philadelphia Flyers. Ted Sater wanted to bring the traditional north-south, dump-and-chase, North American type of hockey back to the New York Rangers. And this did not sit well with, with Mark Pavlich. He became very disenchanted, and he made those sentiments known not only to, uh, to Ted Sater and the Ranger coaching staff but the front office, 
realized this, they decided that it might be a good time to move Mark Pavlich. So the Rangers decided to uh, trade Pavlich to the Minnesota North Stars for a second-round draft pick. And he joined uh, Herb Brooks, his former coach with the U.S. Olympic team, and of course the New York Rangers. He joined uh, Herb Brooks and the North Stars for a brief stint. Uh, Mark decided after a handful of games that he really wanted to play overseas back in Europe. And that's what he did. He went over and played in Europe for several seasons. I believe it was one year in Britain and then two years over in Italy. And uh, he had some fine seasons there. But he spent uh, basically the rest of his career playing overseas. But then in 1991-92, the San Jose Sharks entered the National Hockey League. And uh, they came a call in once again, and they convinced uh, Mark Pavlich to give it a, give it a try. And unfortunately, Mark uh, Pavlich only uh, played two games with the San Jose Sharks, but he t- does have the distinction of assisting on the very first goal in San Jose Sharks history, a goal that was scored by Craig Cox. So he's, uh, he had quite a career, Mark Pavlich, number 16. He had a tremendous collegiate career. He assisted on the... What turned out to be, in essence, the gold medal winning goal by Mike Ruzioni against the, against the Russians. He set a Ranger rookie scoring record. His rookie season with the Rangers had an impactful presence for the, for the uh, Rangers against the Philadelphia Flyers in two playoff years in a row. To this day, holds the most goals scored in one Ranger home game with five against the Hartford Whalers. Had a tremendous impact on the clubs he played over in Europe. Mark Pavlich was a leader. He was a terrific center iceman. And he currently ranks number 83 in the top Ranger 100 player list. And it was a real pleasure going back and reminiscing about one of the greatest, really the greatest centers, definitely in the decade of the 80s, but really one of the top centers that the Rangers have had in their history. And that's number 16, Mark Pavlich. So that wraps up the fourth episode of the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. Thanks again for tuning in. Thank you for listening. This has been a Go Tommy Boy production.